Hi, my name is Nick Burnham and I'm down here at Captiva Island in Florida with Boston Whaler. Now when we think about Boston Whaler, we think about boats like the Super Sport 13 and the Montauk 17. But actually in 2010, Boston Whaler had a pretty big sea change of attitude. They kept their core values, the safety, the unsinkability, the great fishing platforms, but they added practicality and they added size. The boats got bigger, they went through a 32 and a 35, and now a 42, which is the boat I've got behind me here. But the big change is the functionality. It's all designed about being on the water and about accommodating the whole family. And I'm gonna do a quick look around this and show you exactly what I mean. I think this bow area here neatly encapsulates exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so you've got a seating area around the bow, around a table, that's nothing new. But that table will drop electrically and make that into a sun pad if you want it. But better yet, on a nice evening when you're motoring along slowly, you can lift the backs of these up on both sides and give you a great forward facing area just here to sit and watch the world go by. Beyond that, there is a cool box tucked away under here. You can chuck some ice in there and chuck your drinks in there where there's a hand. And perhaps if you're at anchor, you might want to lift the back of this one up and give you a nice dinette area around the front. Failing that, of course, you've got a sunbed here with lift up armrests. And underneath here, there is a massive storage area. And this gives you storage for a bimini that will enclose this whole area with a bit of shade. If we come to the back of the boat, it's a similar story. You've got your triple helm just here. But if you want your crew to be able to enjoy the ride under the shelter of this hard top behind the screen, well then there's a seat here which just lifts out, flips over, and you'll notice that this is actually hydraulically balanced. So that if you let go, it's not going to drop and slam on anybody's fingers. And that then just lifts up, gives you a great seating area just there. There's a wet bar behind there with a sink and a, uh, a griddle. And then further back, it's classic Boston Whaler. It's all completely open, loads of room for fishing. But again, it's adaptable. You've got seats that flip out from the combings. There's a dive door in the side and everything is where you need it. So underneath the seat is the dive ladder and underneath the floor is the table to make that area into another diving area. Now, if we come onto the inside of this boat, this is not designed to compete with boats like sea lions. This is a centre cockpit walk around boat. It's an absolutely magnificent day boat. But what this does is just increase the scope of the boat. So you've got over six foot of headroom down here. You've got seating for six people. You can make this into a double berth if you want to have a night on the boat. And you've got a little galley area down here as well and a really good separate head. So it really extends the scope of the boat. Now I was talking to Charlie Floss earlier, who's the design manager for Boston Whaler. And he has a really great expression. What he says is the boat is the tool not the experience. What he's trying to provide is the on-water experience. Now we've got four 350 horsepower Mercury Verado outboards on here, so I think the best thing to do next is to go and experience it. Right. So out here on the water you might think having those four engines is a little bit daunting, but in fact the interface is exactly the same as you would have with a twin engine setup. So you've got two throttles and a steering wheel, and each throttle controls a pair of engines. In fact, there's also a joystick on here, and that's rather neat because when you're manoeuvring in the harbour, you don't touch the throttle, you don't touch the wheel. You control the joystick and you can watch it vectoring the engines in pairs to get the boat to do what you want it to do. But of course, a boat like this isn't about manoeuvring in the harbour. A boat like this is about getting out here on the water and really using it. And I've been very fortunate today because the guys from Boston Whaler wanted to check out a cove that they're planning to use for an event and uh, that's about 10 miles up the coast. So we had a real good run up the coast and back again. More importantly, we went to go and see where Jimmy Buffett's Cheeseburger in Paradise was written. So that was a nice bit of Americana history there. In terms of performance, well, she cruises very nicely at around 32 knots and uh, that's about 5,000 RPM and she tops out well into the 40s. With those, four engines and 350 horsepower each, you'd expect the acceleration to be quite phenomenal. And the fact of the matter is, it is. If you give the boat full throttle, it organises all the trim of the engines and the trim tabs for you. All you've got to do is nail it and hang on. But I say hang on, in actual fact, even in choppy conditions like this, and we're now doing about 30 knots, 
It's a really rock solid, steady ride. The boat feels all of a piece, it's cutting through the water, and this is what this boat does, it covers ground. When we went out the coast earlier, we just did 30 knots all the way there, 30 knots all the way back, really comfortably. But it's not just straight line performance, it's cornering too. If we back it off a little bit, that's back to 30 knots again. We can put this boat into a hard turn, and it just digs in and goes round. You really can't wrong foot it. I had this really hard over earlier at about 35 knots, and it just does what you ask of it. You turn, it turns. There's a, a ball on the steering wheel, which means that you can just spin it from lock to lock. And because it's got very powerful power steering, the steering is even with those great big four engines, it's really light, it's, it's fingertip stuff, and it's really direct. I've got to say, they've got the dynamics of this boat absolutely spot on. It's a fabulous thing to drive, it's great fun. So, Charlie Floss's philosophy, the boat is the tool, not the experience. Well, I can tell you, this is a phenomenal tool, and that was a fantastic experience.